Have you checked out God Honest Truth Ministries lately? Especially our website? If you haven't, go to www.godhonesttruth.com and there you can find out all the information you need to know about God Honest Truth Ministries, including links to our latest post and live stream directly on the homepage. You can also find article teachings and video teachings. You can find audio Bibles to download to whatever device you have and listen to at your own leisure when it's convenient for you. You can find historical information to let you know about the history of the church and the faith and how we got to where we are today in the church and the faith. You can find resources to help you in your study of the Hebrew language, not just apps, but also actual classes from real professors at real institutions so that you can further your study in the Hebrew language. There's also quick references for common liturgy and prayers in case you want to look up something that you don't remember quite exactly or if you want to look at it in the Hebrew. You can all right there on GodHonestTruth.com. You can also find our personal notes on various subjects regarding scripture and doctrines. You can, of course, find the weekly tour portions to include not only the tour portion, but the half tour portion and the Brit Hadashah portion as well. You can find out more information about us and our ministry, as well as convenient ways to contact us if you ever need to reach us. You can also find links directly to our podcast channels where you can find us on the most popular podcasting platforms, including iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, or what have you. You can find all the direct links right there on our website. And similar to that, you can also find the various links to our video platforms on which we host not only the live stream, but also the on-demand videos as well. And if you're ever looking to connect with us on social media, you can also find our social media profile links directly from our website, whether that be Gab, Parlor, Truth, Twitter, Facebook, or what have you, you can find it all directly from our website. You can also find ways to support the ministry and get involved, whether that's a financial donation, prayers, or what have you, you can find all that information right here on the website. And most importantly, you can find links to our live streams and host every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us for tonight's service. If this is your first time, we'd just like to take a moment to give you a quick overview of what's going to be going on during tonight's service and live stream. The live stream service is set up so that it can minister to those of you out there who may not have a congregation or a fellowship to go to in person. This is designed so that you can actually take part in an actual service without actually having to go out of your house to a location. Maybe there's not a congregation in your area that you can attend. Maybe you're homebound for some reason. This service is meant for those of you like that in that situation. We're gonna start out with a brief introduction and welcome to the stream. After that, we're gonna get into some liturgy to include both the National Anthem of Israel and the Shema. Then we're going to do some announcements and continue with some liturgy. After we do the liturgy, we'll be getting into the tour portion, the Haftor portion, and the Brit Hadashah portion. 
For those of you who are unfamiliar with these terms, the Torah portion is a selection out of the first five books of the Bible. That's the Torah. Then there's the half Torah portion, which comes from the prophets or the writings. Then we have the Brit Hadashah portion, which is a select portion to read every week from the section that most people would call the New Testament. Now we do the Torah portion, the Haft Torah portion, and the Brit Hadashah portion because if nothing else, the Word of God or the Word of Yahweh is more important to do than anything else. So we definitely make sure to do that every week that we have service. Then we get into the drosh or the teaching for the night. And this could be on various subjects and you should be able to see the subject of tonight's drosh down below in the title of this video. We hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to contact us at team at godhonesttruth.com. God Honest Truth Ministries is a ministry supported completely by our Father Yahweh and by viewers like you. If you'd like more information about donating to God Honest Truth Ministries, you can find the links through our website at GodHonestTruth.com. There you can find the links for Buy Me A Coffee, Kofi, and Venmo. There are also other ways to donate as well. You can do that through GabPay, PayPal, you can do it through Facebook, various different means. If you have any questions about donating, you can always contact us at team at GodHonestTruth.com. As of November 2022, God Honest Truth Ministries is not a 501c3 organization. Come join us on all the various social media platforms. Come like and follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Truth Social, on Parler, on Gab. Wherever you happen to be, we're probably there also. And you can find all the links to our social media profiles on our website at www.GodHonestTruth.com.
So while you're waiting for the video and the live stream to start, why don't you go down below and help us out by hitting that like button. Also hit that subscribe button as well as ring the bell so that you're notified every time that we go live or upload an on-demand video. Hit that share button and share tonight's stream around with your friends, family, coworkers, or who have you. And also go down below and leave us a comment. Say hi, Shabbat Shalom, or what have you, because we always love hearing from you. We always love hearing from you, and if you ever need to contact us with any comments, questions, suggestions, or concerns, or what have you, you can always contact us directly through email at team at godhonesttruth.com, or you can contact us through one of our many social media profiles, which you can find the links to on our website, godhonesttruth.com. We sincerely hope that you enjoy tonight's live stream. The stream will be starting shortly, so just hang on just a short while longer. Well, Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Glad to see everyone back for another edition of God Honest Truth live stream. And it's that time of year again, the first of the beginning of the fall feast. And tonight we're going to be learning all about Yom Teruah. You'll be learning where it comes from in scripture, some possible prophetic end times connections, how to celebrate it, all that good stuff. So definitely make sure to stay tuned until tonight's drosh or teaching. But before that, we're going to be getting to our liturgy, our Torah portion, our Haft Torah portion, and our Brit Chadashah portion also. Now, if you're just joining us for the first time, we would like to say Shalom and welcome. We are God Honest Truth, and we are a Messianic ministry based in Western North Carolina. You can find out more about us at www.godhonesttruth.com. There you can find our social networking links our audio podcasting links, our video platform links, article teachings, video teachings, resources to help you in your study of Hebrew, audio Bibles, and so much more. And if you ever need to contact us, 
You can do so directly through email at team at godhonesttruth.com. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into our liturgy. Kohod balevav panima nefesh yehudi omiya ufateh misrak kahadima ayin lazion sofiya Olo wafta tikva tenu, ha tikva bashno tapaim, lahi otam koshi, behar tenu, eret zion verusha lahaim, lahi otam koshi, Beharzenu Eretz Zion Verushalayim. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Baruch Shem Kivod Malhuto Leholam Vayed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is for eternity. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house, and upon your gates. So on the way of announcements this week, just one more time, I would like to reiterate that we do have a new Facebook group for everyone out there who would like to come and join us over on Facebook. We have now changed that over. We didn't initially realize the difference between a group and a page, but now we do, fortunately. So we now have a Facebook group. Hopefully that's going to allow for better interaction, better sharing and all that good stuff. So come on over and join us over on Facebook.com forward slash groups, forward slash God Honest Truth. Also, just to reiterate too, BitChute has been giving us some issues as of late, so we may stop uploading new videos there if they can't get that corrected. But more to follow there. If you just happen to see that new videos aren't getting uploaded, that's the reason, because we've been having issues with BitChute. Also, we're planning some future series coming up for the channel. The next upcoming series that we are trying to plan is a teaching series on plural marriage, what most people know of as polygamy, how that is described and used within scripture itself, some history after the apostolic times. So if you have any information or requests that you would like to have included in there, if you have a certain question that you'd like us to answer, Go ahead and send that over to us through our email at team at God Honest Truth. Later on, sometime next year, we're also planning a series on Shabbat, going through the Tanakh, going through also the Brit Hadashah, and some history after the Apostolic Times, and turn it into a multi-video series instead of just the one we did a few months ago. Likewise, if you have any questions about Shabbat that you would like to have answered in that series, make sure to go ahead and send that over to us also. And here is your list of upcoming episodes for about the next two months or so. Like I said, tonight it's going to be all about Yom Teruah because that comes up in about two weeks or so. 
Next week, we're going to be doing a teaching or drosh on Yom Kippurim, which comes up almost immediately after Yom Teruah, about 10 days, so it's a very short space there. So you can learn about Yom Kippurim next week, and each of these episodes will be on the corresponding Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And here's your list of upcoming feast days and Moedim for the next upcoming year, all the way through Shavuot of next year. And of course, our next upcoming feast day is going to be, of course, Yom Teruah, which starts on September 15th at sunset and runs through September 17th at sunset. And like always, if you have any prayer requests or announcements that you would like to have announced live on air, make sure to have those in to us by Thursday evening at the latest, because we do go live on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, if you would like to have your prayer request just added to our list of prayers and not be announced publicly, that's perfectly okay too. Just write in to us about your prayer request and let us know that you don't want to announce publicly and we'll just pray with you and for you over your prayer request. So now, if you would, join us for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us both the blessings that we have noticed and even the blessings that we don't notice, Father. Please open our minds and our hearts to your scripture, to what you would have us to hear and learn from your scripture, Father. Guide us in the way that we should think and also the way that we should go in this next upcoming week so that we should be a light unto you, unto your truth, and that we would be glorifying your name in the way that we live, in the way that we talk, and the way that we act. For all this we ask in your holy and heavenly name. Amen. All right, so now let's get back to our liturgy. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. He walked among us, filled with your Spirit. The only one who ever perfectly fulfilled your Torah, he healed the sick, and raised the dead, the multitudes of our people sought his touch. He taught as no man taught, with authority he brought forth the treasures of the Torah. How the children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean, how the despised and outcast found love and release from their sin. How the hypocrites feared him, whose words uncovered their sin, despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of Israel. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, turned every one to his own way. Our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world, his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name. We are in him. His spirit empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who has given us Messiah our King. For the sake of our Master Yeshua, in His merit and virtues, may the sayings of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be favorable before You, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. Avinu Sheba Shemayim Yikadesh Shemcha Tavo Mehutecha Yasa Retsonecha Baaret Kaasher Naasa Bashemaim. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done, as on earth, so as in heaven. Ten lanu hayom, lechem hukenu, Usalach lanu et ashmatenu ka asher. So lechem anachnu. La Asher Ashmulanu. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Ve'al Tevienu Lide Masa, Ki'im Hatsilenu Min Hara. Kilaha, Hamamlaha, Vahagavura, Vahatifaret, La Olame, Olamim. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. None can compare to you, O Lord, and nothing compares to your creation. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your mercy endures throughout all generations. The Lord is King. The Lord was King. The Lord shall be King throughout all time. May the Lord grant His people mercy. May the Lord bless His people with peace. Proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Let us exalt Him together. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forth, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you. For from Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. All right, and tonight's Torah portion is going to be Numbers chapter 3, verse 14 through chapter 4, verse 16. And like always, we'll give you just a moment to find that in your preferred translation if you would like to follow along with us at home. Numbers chapter 3 verse 14 through chapter 4 verse 16. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Register the children of Levi by their fathers' houses, by their clans. Register every male from a new moon old and above. So Moshe registered them according to the word of Yahweh as he had been commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon and Kehath and Merari. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon by their clans, Libni and Shimei, and the sons of Kehath by their clans, Amram and Yitshar, Hebron and Uziel, and the sons of Merari by their clans, Mali and Mushi. These are the clans of the Levites by their fathers' houses. From Gershon came the clan of the Libnites and the clan of the Shemites. These were the clans of the Gershonites. Their registered ones, according to the number of all the males, from a new moon old and above, their registered ones were 7,500. The clans of the Gershonites were to camp westward behind the dwelling place, and the leader of the father's house of the Gershonites, Eliasaph, son of Lael. And the duty of the children of Gershon in the tent of appointment was the dwelling place and the tent with its covering and the covering of the door of the tent of appointment and the screens of the courtyard and the covering of the door of the courtyard, which is around the dwelling place and the slaughter place and their cords according to all its service. And from Kehath came the clan of the Amramites and the clan of the Yishurites and the clan of the Hebronites and the clan of the Uzielites. These were the clans of the Kehathites. In number, all the males from a new moon old and above were 8,600, guarding the duty of the set-apart place. The clans of the children of Kehath were to camp on the south side of the dwelling place. And the leaders of the father's house of the clans of the Kehathites was Elitzaphon, son of Uziel. And their duty was the ark and the table and the lampstand and the slaughter places and the utensils of the set-apart place used in the service and the covering and all its service. And Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, was to be chief over the leaders of the Levites with oversight of those who guard the duty of the set-apart place. From Merari came the clan of the Malites and the clan of the Mushites. These were the clans of Merari. And the number of their registered ones, all the males from a new moon old and above, were 6,200. And the leader of the father's house of the clans of Merari was Zuriel, son of Abihayel. These were to camp on the north side of the dwelling place. And the appointed duty of the children of Merari was the boards of the dwelling place, and its bars, and its columns, and its sockets, and its utensils, and all its service, and the columns of the courtyard all around, with their sockets, and their pegs, and their cords. 
and those who were to camp before the dwelling place on the east before the tent of appointment were Moshe and Aaron and his sons guarding the duty of the set-apart place and the duty of the children of Israel. But the stranger who came near was to be put to death. All the registered ones of the Levites, whom Moshe and Aaron registered at the mouth of Yahweh by their clans, all the males from a new moon old and above, were twenty-two thousand. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Register all the firstborn males of the children of Israel from a new moon old and above, and take the number of their names. And you shall take the Levites for me. I am Yahweh instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the livestock of the Levites, instead of all the firstborn among the livestock of the children of Israel. And Moshe registered all the firstborn among the children of Israel, as Yahweh had commanded him, and all the firstborn males by the number of names from one new moon old and above of their registered ones were 22,273. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the livestock of the Levites instead of their livestock, and the Levites shall be mine. I am Yahweh. And for the ransom of the two hundred and seventy-three of the firstborn of the children of Israel, who are more than the number of the Levites, you shall take five shekels for each one, head by head, take it by the shekel of the set-apart place, the shekel of twenty geras. And you shall give the silver, the ransom of those who are in excess among them, to Aaron and his sons. And Moshe took the ransom silver from those who were over and above those who were ransomed by the Levites. From the firstborn of the children of Israel, he took the silver, one thousand three hundred and sixty-five pieces, according to the shekel of the set-apart place. And Moshe gave their ransom silver to Aaron and to his sons, according to the word of Yahweh, as Yahweh had commanded Moshe. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, Take a census of the sons of Kehath from among the children of Levi, by their clans, by their father's house, from thirty years old and above, even to fifty years old, all who enter the service to do the work in the tent of appointment. This is the service of the sons of Kehath in the tent of appointment, the most set apart matters. At the breaking of camp, Aaron and his sons shall come, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of the witness with it, and shall put on it a covering of fine leather, and spread over that an all blue wrapper, and shall insert its poles. And on the table of showbread they shall spread a blue wrapper, and shall put on it the dishes, and the ladles, and the bowls, and the jars for pouring, and the showbread on it. And they shall spread over them a scarlet wrapper, and cover the same with a covering of fine leather, and shall insert its poles, and shall take a blue wrapper, and cover the lampstand of the light, with its lamps, and its snuffers, and its trays, and all its oil vessels by which they serve it. And they shall put it with all its utensils in a covering of fine leather, and put it on a bar. And over the golden solder place they shall spread a blue wrapper, and cover it with a covering of fine leather, and shall insert its poles, and shall take all the utensils of service with which they serve in the set-apart place, and shall put them in a blue wrapper, cover them with a covering of fine leather, and put them on a bar and shall remove the ashes from the solder place, and spread a purple wrapper over it, and shall put on it all its utensils by which they serve there, the fire holders, the forks, and the shovels, and the basins, and all the utensils of the slaughter place, and shall spread on it a covering of fine leather, and insert its poles. And when Aaron and his sons have finished covering the set-apart objects, and all the furnishings of the set-apart place at the breaking of camp, then the sons of Kehath shall come to lift them, but let them not touch that which is set apart, lest they die. These matters are the burden of the sons of Kehath in the tent of appointment. And the oversight of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, is the oil for the light, and the sweet incense, and the daily grain offering, and the anointing oil, and the oversight of all the dwelling place, and all that is in it, with a set apart place and its furnishings.
Baruch Ata Yahweh, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Temet, Bechaye Olam Betukenu, Baruch Ata Yahweh, Noten Ha Torah. Amen. This is the Torah which Moses placed before the children of Israel. It is in accord with the Lord's command by the hand of Moses. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. Etzhaim hi, lama hazim kimba, betomeha ha meushar. Dehera he ha, dar he noam, beho nativo te ha, shalom. Ha shi venu adonai, ele ha vena shuva. Ha desh, ha desh amenu. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen faithful prophets to speak words of truth. Amen. All right, and tonight's Haftor portion is going to be Isaiah chapter 43 verses 8 through 13. And once again, we'll give you just a moment to find that in your preferred translation at home. Isaiah chapter 43 verses 8 through 13. He shall bring out a blind people who have eyes, and deaf ones who have ears. All the nations shall be assembled, and all the peoples be gathered. Who among them declares this, and show us former events? Let them give their witnesses to be declared right, or let them hear and say, It is truth. You are my witnesses, declares Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no L formed, nor after me there is none. I, I am Yahweh, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved and made known, and there was no foreign one, foreign mighty one among you. And you are my witnesses, declares Yahweh, that I am L. Even from the day I am he, and no one delivers out of my hand. I work, and who turns it back? Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. All right, and our Brit Hadashah portion is going to be Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. And one last time, we'll give you just a moment to find that in your preferred translation. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. And he himself gave some as emissaries, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as shepherds and teachers, for the perfecting of the set-apart ones to the work of service, to a building up of the body of Messiah, until we all come to the unity of the belief and of the knowledge of the Son of Elohim, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the completeness of Messiah, so that we should no longer be children, tossed and borne about by every wind of teaching, by the trickery of men and cleverness until the craftiness of leading astray, but maintaining the truth in love, we grow up in all respects into him who is the head, Messiah, from whom the entire body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, 
according to the working by which each part does its share, causing growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Baruch atah Yahweh, Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Asher natan lanu ha'devar ha'emet, v'chaye olam betukenu. Baruch atah Yahweh, noten ha'brit ha'dashah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the word of truth and planted life everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. All right, so right now we're going to be getting into the drosh, or actually just here real shortly. But before we do that, is this your first time celebrating the Fall Feast Day, specifically Yom Teruah? If it is, let us know down in the comments below, or if you celebrate in the past, what is your favorite thing about Yom Teruah? Be kind of interesting to see how many people this is going to be their first time doing this. Hopefully be able to learn something from this drosh. But while you're down there, also make sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button and the share button and share it around with someone you may know, friends, family, colleagues, or who have you. Because odds are you know somebody right now that would enjoy this type of content. So go ahead and share it around with them. And every time you do, we really, really do appreciate you spreading the word about God, Honest Truth Ministry. And let's do a quick check on our multiple streams. For anyone joining us for the first time, we do this every week, but just to let you know that we multi-stream to YouTube, Twitch, and Rumble. So if one of those happens to go down or you don't like to, you know, patronize one or the other for whatever reason, then you can always go to another one. But the best way to do it is to go to our website, GodHonestTruth.com, and there you can watch the live stream and you can also get the show notes and the draw slides and all that good stuff. So it looks like everything is still up and going and good to go. So yeah, let's go ahead and get to tonight's drosh. So like I said, tonight's drosh is going to be all about Yom Teruah. If you would like to go to our website and click on the post for this drosh, for this teaching, there you can find the drosh slides, the on-demand video. You can also find the research notes that we put together for this. That way it can help you in your further study on the subject. There's all kinds of scripture and quotes or historical quotes, text links, video links, all that good stuff. So go check it out, GodHonestTruth.com, and click on the post for Yom Teruah. Now Yom Teruah itself, obviously, is made up of two different words, even in Hebrew, Yom and Teruah. Yom is the Hebrew word for day, meaning most of the time a 24-hour period, both morning and evening. But it can also mean the daylight period of any particular day, from sun up to sun down. But in this context of Yom Teruah, we're talking about the 24-hour period. And then the second word, Teruah, meaning a shout or a blast, especially from a trumpet or a shofar. Now, for my fellow nerds out here, here is your entries for from the lexicons and dictionaries. And just to let you know, I had to cut these entries down a whole bunch. They were huge, lots of information here. So we had to cut it down to fit on the slide for tonight's drosh. But if you would like the full entry, then please feel free to go look that up on your own for verification that way. Or you can just go to the notes that we put together. And that's on the entry or the post on GodHonestTruth.com for Yom Teruah. And here's your third entry for Yom. And of course, all these entries are saying pretty much the same thing, that it means a day, 24-hour period composed of morning and evening. 
And here is your lexicon and dictionary entries for teruwa, meaning a clangor of trumpets, an alarm, blowing the trumpet, blowing the shofar, joyful noise, is to be a time of joy. So in scriptures, we first come into contact and is first established and ordained in Leviticus 23, verses 23 through 25. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh new moon, on the first day of the new moon, you have a rest, a remembrance of teruah. You do no servile work, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh couple things to note real quick just real quick number one it's going to be on the first day of the seventh new moon that means the very first day of the seventh month it also says that you're to do no servile work this is what's referred to in some circles as a shabbaton right you have the regular weekly sabbath where you rest and you don't do any work right we all know that one pretty well but a Shabbaton is like a minor Sabbath. In a Shabbaton, generally, you don't do strenuous work, per se, but you are still allowed to do things like cook and prepare food. This light, very light stuff, but try to not do any work, if at all possible. Then we go on to look in Numbers chapter 29, verses 1 through 6. And in the seventh new moon, on the first day of the new moon, you have a set-apart gathering. You do no servile work. It is Yom Teruah. And you shall prepare an ascending offering as a sweet fragrance to Yahweh. One young bull, one ram, seven lambs a year old, perfect ones, and their grain offering, fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for the bull, two-tenths for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs, and one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. Besides the ascending offering with its grain offering for the new moon, the continual ascending offering with its grain offering, and their drink offerings according to their right ruling, as a sweet fragrance, an offering made by fire to, to Yahweh. So, back when the tabernacle in, in this context and then the temple was still standing, this would be one of those times where you brought additional offerings in recognition and in celebration, rather, of Yom Teruah. Now, again, it's stating that it's going to be on the first day of the seventh new moon, first day of the seventh month. Also, it again repeats, you do no servile work, but here, notice this the point that's different than the last passage we just read. Here, it specifically calls this Yom Teruah. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because this feast, or this Moedim, is known by several different names. Obviously, it's known by Yom Teruah because that's the name we just read in Scripture. However, it's also known as Rosh Hashanah, which we'll get into in just a little bit. Yom Hazikaron, or Hazikaron, and Yom Harat HaOlam, meaning birthday of the world. Because tradition has it that on Yom Teruah, that's when the earth was created. Way back on the first day of creation, right? You don't get that from scripture. So take it for what it's worth. I don't know of any way to disprove it, but there's no way to prove it from Scripture. It's just a traditional belief that is held, especially by those within Judaism, specifically Orthodox Judaism. However, this name, the first one up here, Rosh Hashanah, and the month names themselves, this seventh month is known as Tishrei, this all came from Babylon. We're told in the Talmud of all places that the names of the months came up with the people from Babylon once they returned from that exile. Now, when you read through scripture, 
you notice that there are no names for the days of the week or the months of the year. It's always something like first month, second month, fifth month, tenth month, right? There's no names like we have today. Now, the days of the week are very similar. You have first day, second day, fifth day, sixth day. However, the seventh day is known as Shabbat. Now, you can call it the seventh day of the week, or you can call it Shabbat. It's all the same thing. But with the months, it's a lot different. It wasn't until after the return from the Babylonian exile that the months ended up getting names. And the seventh month, which we've already read about for Yom Teruah, they named as Tishrei. And these names came from Babylon. They did not, did not come from Scripture. Another traditional belief about Yom Teruah, also known as Rosh Hashanah, is that it's the new year, right? However, it's not. It's the seventh month. So the seventh month is like right in the middle of the year. That cannot be the new year. Unfortunately, this is also another belief that came from Babylon. The Babylonians actually had two new years. One of them they celebrated in the seventh month, and then the other one they celebrated six months later in what the Hebrew calendar would call the first month, or the month of Nisan. But again, this whole belief that Yom Teruah and the seventh month is the new year is something that does not come from Scripture, and it's actually something that was brought up from Babylon along with the names of the months that got added instead of second month, sixth month, and so on. So I guess you could say that it's not just Catholic and Protestant Christianity that co-opted some parts of paganism. You can also see this within Judaism as well. Point in case here, or point of fact, the names of the months. Again, when we go to Passover, you sometimes see an egg on the Seder plate. That doesn't come from Scripture. And that actually has very good chances of coming from paganism as well, just like the Easter eggs within mainstream Christianity. Also, during Hanukkah, there are some, some of those within Judaism who have something called a Hanukkah bush. Again, you don't get that from Scripture, not the book of Esther, nothing. That is another co-op of paganism that's been brought in. So, it's not just mainstream Christianity that suffers from secretism. It's also parts of Judaism as well. Now, we know that the seventh month isn't the new year, because the first month, obviously, would be the New Year's Day. And even Josephus tells us that when Moses established these months, that the first month, Nisan, would be the start of the year. We read in the Antiquities of the Jews, But Moses appointed that Nisan should be the first month for their festivals, because he brought them out of Egypt in that month, so that this month began the year as to all the solemnities they observed to the honor of God. Now, what is referring to right here is coming from out of Egypt and the months. We can read in Exodus 12, verse 2. This new moon is the beginning of new moons for you. It is the first new moon of the year for you. So, and they were still in Egypt at this point. They hadn't had the Passover or anything like that. And Yahweh was telling Moshe that this first month, this month of Nisan, was to be the first of the months, first the beginning of the new moons for you. And we can further, further verify that in that the Passover happened on the 14th day of the first new moon, of the first month, right? So there's some further verification. Now, like I said, originally the 
Hebrew months did not have names attached to them like we're used to in our calendar nowadays. Again, just to reiterate, they went by the designation of first month, third month, ninth month, etc. However, like I said, after the Babylonian exile, they brought in the names for the months from Babylonia. And then you start seeing in scripture there the names associated with the months, but a lot of times you also see the scriptural designation for the months. A little confusing, but let me show you an example. Esther chapter 3, verse 7. In the first new moon, which is the new moon of Nisan, in the twelfth year of sovereign Ahasuerus, someone cast per, that is, the lot, before Haman from day to day and from new moon to new moon, until it fell on the twelfth new moon, which is the new moon of Adar. So here you can see they call it first, the particular month they're talking about, they first call it the first new moon, which is the standard scriptural designation for which month you're talking about, right? First new moon, seventh new moon, etc. It then goes on to use the Babylonian name that was attached at that point to the months. And it says, which is the new moon of Nisan. So, further verification that the first month, the first new moon, is Nisan. That's the head of the year, not the seventh month. Now, there is one thing that can throw some people off when they read this, because the term Rosh Hashanah is in Scripture. Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 1. In the 25th year of our exile at Rosh Hashanah, on the 10th of the new moon, in the 14th year after the city was stricken, on that same day, the hand of Yahweh came up on me and he brought me there. I do apologize. I should have done my due diligence in putting the context surrounding this. But this verse is not speaking of the first day of the seventh month, right? This verse is speaking of the first new moon, the first month, and it's calling it Rosh Hashanah. So, again, I apologize for not putting the entire context in there. But if you go and look that up, Ezekiel 40, verse 1, and look at the surrounding context, you'll be able to determine that this is the first month and not the seventh month. The first month is Rosh Hashanah. That term, Rosh Hashanah, literally means head of the year, what we call nowadays as New Year's. But anyways, here in Ezekiel, Rosh Hashanah is referring to the first month as the New Year's, not the seventh month. So what about trumpets, right? We went over the establishment of Yom Teruah within Scripture. We went over the names and where that comes from. So, and Yom is pretty straightforward, right? It's just day. But what about trumpets? What significance does trumpets have in Yom Teruah and Scripture itself? This is where you really do need to start taking notes if you haven't been doing so already. But we look in places like Numbers chapter 10, verses 2 through 6, and we see that trumpets are used for the moving of the camp, right? It can also be used, or here we also see it used for calling a meeting. Now, in this particular context and passage, we also see that they're told to make silver trumpets, not just shofars out of animal horns, but silver trumpets. And they're used for, in this con er, er, in this passage we just mentioned, Numbers 10, 2 through 6, it's used for moving the camp, calling meetings, stuff like that. We also see it used in other ways, like in Numbers 10, 9 through 10, and Psalms 81, verse 3, that they're used, the trumpets and shofars are used in times of war. On feast days, especially, it's usually, people usually blow trumpets or shofars to announce the beginning of a feast day or moedim. 
It's used for new moon celebrations or otherwise known as the start of months. We also see in scriptures that shofars and trumpets were used to announce royalty when royalty came on the scene. So trumpets and shofars are used for a lot of different things. We look in Joel 2 verses 1 through 2. Blow away shofar in Zion and sound an alarm in my set-apart mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the day of Yahweh is coming, for it is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like the morning clouds spread over the mountains, a people many and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor shall there ever be again after them, to the years of many generations." So he's saying, go up on Zion, go to my set-apart mountain, and blast the trumpet, right? Making an announcement. In this case, that everyone on earth to tremble in awe. Okay, I think we're good. Moving on to the words of our Master and Messiah, Yeshua. Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31. And immediately after the distress of those days, the, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give its light, and the stars shall fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then the sign of the son of Adam shall appear in the heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the son of Adam coming on the clouds of the heaven with power and much esteem. And he shall send his messengers with a sound with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his chosen ones from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Now here, Yeshua is talking about the end times, obviously, when Yeshua returns for the second coming. And at his second coming, there's going to be the great sound of a trumpet to announce all of this. Just like they use trumpets to announce the moving and meeting back in the wilderness, They used it to announce the entrance of feast days, new moons, and royalty. Here in the end times, trumpets are going to be used in much the same way to announce King Yeshua coming. To announce meeting, because Judgment Day is going to be right around the corner, right? Also announce things like moving. Those of you who aren't saved and should fear, you better get moving do you know good in the end, but hey, you could try. So trumpets here in the end times are going to be used in very similar ways as we see nowadays. Another connection with Yom Teruah. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incom- incorruptible and we all shall be changed. So here, again, the sound of the trumpet in the end of days will announce, well, pretty much a meeting like it was back in the wilderness, but it's calling all of the dead to a meeting. All of those who are dead or asleep in Messiah will be raised. Here he says, For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So, again, Trumpets used for the call of a meeting. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Because the master himself shall come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of a chief messenger, and with the trumpet of Elohim, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. So pretty much saying the same thing as we just read back in 1 Corinthians. That at the sound of a trumpet, at the blowing of possibly even a shofar, the dead will rise up, or let me rephrase that, the dead in Messiah, those who are asleep in Messiah, shall rise up with their new bodies and meet Yeshua. It says here the dead shall rise first instead of, well, you understand, the dead will go up first to meet him, and then those who are still alive will go up to meet him, as it's stated in other passages. But 
maybe some of you have caught on to this already. Things like Passover and Hanukkah and Purim and stuff, we all know what those are meant to remember and to memorialize. Like we're told specifically in scripture that Passover is to remember and memorialize the exodus from Egypt when the angel of death passed over the houses with the blood of the lamb on them. Now, after Yeshua, we also celebrate Passover in remembrance and memorial of what Yeshua did for us as how he became our Passover lamb, right? So it's got multiple meanings there for Passover. For Hanukkah, we remember the Maccabeans and their revolt, successful revolt against the Greeks, Purim, when the Judeans with Esther and Mordechai were successful with the aid of Yahweh to stem off the genocide of the Judeans. So we're told the Moedim and the feast days a lot of times what they are to memorialize or to remember. However, if you remember when we read those passages for Yom Teruah, it says nothing about what it's for, why we should be doing it, what we should be memorializing or remember, or nothing like that. So why do we have Yom Teruah if we're not told that it's in memorial or remembrance of something in the past. After looking at all these passages concerning the end times, this is something, again, it's all circumstantial, so make up your own mind. But I, and like a lot of other, one, other people, think that Yom Teruah is looking ahead to the end times. When we look at the spring feast days, like Passover, Pesach, and Shavuot, the spring feast days, memorialized and fit in with Yeshua's first coming. Then, after we all know, after Shavuot, there's this big space in the year before we get to Yom Teruah. Already, there has been a big space between Yeshua's first coming and Yeshua's second coming. Then, I, like a lot of others, believe that the fall feast days are there to symbolize and look forward to and will fit in with the end times and Yeshua's second coming, starting with Yom Teruah. Uh, I should have put this in the drosh, but we throw this in real quick. Yom Teruah is a day that's not set specifically on any particular day. Let me clarify this real quick. I know scripture says it's on the first day of the new moon or the seventh new moon, right? However, it doesn't start or it's not supposed to start scripturally speaking until you see that first sliver of the new moon, right? So sometimes this can be on the expected day or it could be, another day right after that. It could be delayed a day, depending on the year and what's going on, right? So no one really knows the timing of Teruah if you're doing it according to Scripture. Remember when Yeshua was telling us that no man knows the day nor the hour of his second coming, except the Father in heaven? So there's another kind of connection of the end times to Yom Teruah. So there's a lot of scriptures, a lot of end time stuff. And like I said, the connection to end times prophecy with Yom Teruah is circumstantial, but do your own study, make up your own mind. So you've learned these scriptures, you know what Yom Teruah involves, from scripture anyways, but how do we celebrate it in our own lives? Well, if you're going to celebrate it this year or in years to come, and you want it to do a scriptural celebration, well, scripturally speaking, 
The first day, remember, is a Shabbaton. You do no servile work. You take the day off, you rest up, except maybe for making a meal or whatnot, but you just rest regardless of what day of the week it is. The first day of Yom Teruah is a Shabbaton. Also, blow a trumpet. Make a joyful noise. Blow a shofar if you have a shofar. But this is the day of trumpets. Yom Teruah. Make a joyful noise. Make some sound. Announce to the world that Yom Teruah is here. But as far as scripture goes, that's the only two things that we see commanded for Yom Teruah. That's the no servile work on the first day, and then the blowing of the shofars, blowing of the trumpets. Everything else can be up to you. If you're just going strictly scriptural, you can add in some stuff like Torah readings, Bible study, time with friends and family. It does not specify food or a feast for Yom Teruah, but you can have that. Invite friends and family over. Make it a joyous occasion. Now, remember, those within Judaism have their traditions regarding Yom Teruah, calling it by Rosh Hashanah and believing that it's the new year. So, in accordance with those traditions they have, they brought in some customs to go along with that. So here are some things that the those within Judaism do on Rosh Hashanah. Okay? They since they believe it's the new year, they reflect on the past year and what they've done, right? Whether it's been good, they've improved themselves, or whether they've fallen and backslidden some. So it's a time of personal reflection for them and thinking about how they're going to change themselves in the upcoming year. So they also have something called a Tash League service. Now I've been to a couple of these and well, we'll get into that just right now, but a Tash League service is pretty much where those within Judaism will gather together generally near a flowing stream of water, like a Creek or a brook or something like that. Possibly even a lake, but usually moving water. And they'll take pieces of bread and toss them into the moving water, symbolic of casting off their sins for the new year. However, those of us within the Messianic way of thinking, or the Christian way of thinking, knows that Yeshua took all of our sins, right? So we don't need a Tashlik service for us. I'm just describing for you some of the things that the those within Judaism do in celebration of Yom Teruah. Now, as far as food goes, we know that every feast day has got food, right? And for Yom Teruah, those within Judaism generally have sweet foods on Yom Teruah. And the reason for this is Well, it's in, how should I put this? It's so that they'll have a sweet new year. That The next year coming up will be sweet. That's why they have sweet foods. They have things like apples and honey. They, again, the sweet foods. Some of them are, a lot of people within Judaism even try brand new fruit and stuff that they've never tried before. Right? Might be a good idea. It's always a good idea to try new stuff, right? And of course, on all the feast days except for Passover, you have the obligatory challah, right? And for Yom Teruah, the challah is traditionally made in a circle, as you see on your screen right here. There's a lot of people who make their challah for Yom Teruah with raisins in it. Again, going back to that whole sweet motif. But the food is on the side, okay? It doesn't go against Scripture. It's not a commanded in Scripture. So if you want to go with the sweet motif, go for that. 
There are also those within Judaism who have a fish, and they'll eat a fish head on Yom Teruah. And the reason for this is because they want to be made the head and not the tail. So they eat the fish head. That's the symbolism behind that. But again, when it comes to Scripture and doing just the scriptural way of celebrating Yom Teruah, no servile work on the first day of Yom Teruah, and blow a shofar, blow a trumpet. Now you can add in some other stuff, like I said, Torah portion, Bible study, sweet foods, or come up with another theme for your feast. <laughs> That'd be fine too. But there's the information. Again, no servile work on the first day, blowing of a trumpet. That means the scriptural prescription for Yom Teruah. So in summary, Yom Teruah is the day of trumpets or the day of shouting, right? It occurs on the first day of the seventh new moon or the seventh month. The first day, again, of Yom Teruah is a Shabbaton. You do no servile work. And scripture calls it Yom Teruah and not Rosh Hashanah. And that is just the God honest truth. So we'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. We hope that you got something out of it. We do apologize for not adding a lot more into there. This week has been very, very busy with school starting back and house sitting for family members and normal stuff added into all that. We definitely do better next time. We promise you that. So in just a moment, we'll be doing the Aaronic Benediction. If you have anyone there with you that you would like to have gathered next to you, then go ahead and start gathering them together. While you're doing that, make sure to go down below. Let us know something that you learned about Yom Teruah in the comments. And then while you're down there, make sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and also hit the share button and share it around with someone that you might know. We'd also take, like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has supported us, whether it's through financial means or through your prayers. Both the financial donations and your prayers are very, very much appreciated. You'll be able to see all of the financial sponsors coming up at the end of tonight's live stream. And if you would like to become a financial sponsor, Go to our website and you'll be able to get all the links and information from there. If you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to us at team at godhonesttruth.com. So now to our Aaronic benediction. Give a Yahweh, Yair Yahweh Panave Lecha, Vihunecha. Yesa Yahweh Panave Lecha, Veyasim Lecha. Shalom. May Yahweh bless you and guard you. May Yahweh make his face shed light upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yahweh lift up his face unto you and give you peace. Thank you once again for joining us tonight. We hope that your Shabbat is one that is restful, both for your body, mind, and soul. We hope this next upcoming week is filled with good food, good spirits, good family, good fortune, good health. And until we meet again, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Shabbat Shalom and Shavua Tov. Forever, forever I see I 
Oh, my God. 